What do you think? We need to do an intro or anything? No? Okay. Eighteen years old, I graduated high school and I didn't know what I was going to do, so I went and worked construction for one month. Um, it was awful. Worked from early in the morning till late at night, and I didn't hardly get paid any money for it, which obviously making any kind of money was awesome. I uh, never had money in my life. And my best friend, his older brother, had talked to me and said, why don't you come sell cars? And he said, there's car salesmen that make 5000 a month. And when you're broke, you're thinking, well, I could never make that kind of money. If I did, I'd be rich. So I immediately went there and he picked me up for work. I remember the first day of work, I opened the gate with him. We're the first ones there. He goes in to have a meeting and he tells me to wait outside on the porch. Long story short, guy came in. I ended up helping this guy, not knowing what I was doing. And he ends up buying a car. And I thought, man, this is easy. I got lucky on my very first car deal. When the guy leaves, my manager pages me to the tower and he goes, Andy, do you know how much money you just made? He goes, you just made $1,700. Now, when an 18-year-old kid that's been broke his whole life and he's never had more than 50 bucks in his hand at one time on the best day of his life, makes $1,700 in three hours, my life changed forever. I woke up and I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill this. And I wasn't good, so remember, I'm not good at this point. I don't know how to speak, I don't know how to talk, I stutter, um, I don't believe in myself, but I knew that this was my way out. So, I went all in. I had no hobbies, I had no nothing other than working out and working. And by the time I was 20, I was a top guy in my store. Um, I felt really proud of myself to, for the first time in my life, have a name. I was making you know, six figures a year, doing well. I felt amazing, I loved sales. Within time, I moved up into management. When I got into management, um, I learned how to lead other people. And I learned that the same way that I went through um, not knowing what I was doing, now I was teaching guys who didn't know what they were doing um, how to become great and I fell in love with building sales teams and um, it was awesome. Everything in my life was selling. We were all underdogs. Most of the people that I worked around were just all underdogs and there was a massive shortage of leadership. I don't think until the last eight years of my life, even, even to this day at 43, that I ever had a leader in the automotive industry. Um, we just had people telling us to go make a lot of money. Go make money, go make money, go make money. And, uh, and that was it. I worked for some guys and you know they indoctrinated us into a culture of understanding that getting every deal done at the expense and the cost of whatever was how we need to get deals done. We had to sell cars. Sell cars, sell cars, sell cars. And you know, one day I realized that we had been doing everything wrong. You know, I've got a really good buddy of mine that the first day he got into a car dealership, it was with a great company. And even to this day, he's always been blessed to be in a great company. I, I wish I would have worked there. That wasn't my story. I worked in a place that was a trash can. But because we were making money and I had never really made money, I just didn't leave. I call it the golden handcuff syndrome. I was just, I was just handcuffed, but the day that the, the legal part came in, I never knew that you could get in trouble. I just didn't know that the decisions you could make inside of a dealership with paperwork and stuff like that, that could really get you in trouble. And I learned that it could. My life flashed before my eyes. And I, I never was the same again. I changed immediately. You know, I think that when you're doing the right thing, I think that, especially if you're around the wrong people, they're gonna hate you for it. I've had death threats on my family. I've had death threats on me for doing the right thing. It's, uh, it, it's crazy when you stand up for what's right or when you make a mistake and you own it, how people don't like that. I think because there's a lot of darkness in this world and I think when you stand up for something, I think people hate it. Everybody hated us for telling the truth and my, I would go home and talk to my wife and she would say, listen, you, you're a good guy, you've always tried to do the right thing, and you know, don't let these people trick you or confuse you. And I really believe that you know, when people make good decisions and they tell the truth, I think great things can happen. 
Um, it, it doesn't mean you won't find yourself in bad situations. It doesn't mean that you can't put yourself in a bad spot. That's why it's so important that the people that you're around are good people. You know, I think that that's why now our training program teaches people, you know, how to be great, how to be a professional, how to give customers great customer service, and, and, and how to be around good people. That's it. Um, I would have given my legs to have trained on our stuff when I was in sales. Because you don't know what to look for when you're not around the right people. Since 2019, you know, 2020, all we've done is built our culture, our team, on changing people's lives. That's it. Every single day, eat, sleep, and breathe. Um, helping salespeople earn financially um, big income by doing the right things, by being around right people, talking about what true leadership looks like. Um, you know, the Elliott Group has been built on more than just a sales training program. It's a life coaching program, really, because we get people to believe in themselves, which I think was something that for a long time I didn't feel like I was worth it. And that's why I didn't leave bad situations, you know, because I didn't think I deserved anything better. Is um, the Elliott Group perfect? Absolutely not. Every day, we're trying to figure out how to recreate, um, how to become better. You know, nobody's perfect except Jesus. So every day, we're always trying to figure out how to get better. Um, we surround ourselves with the right people. Um, iron sharpens iron. You know, our, our company goes to church together. Um, our company um, spends most of our time together. We hang out with each other on the weekend. And unless we're traveling or we're here together, um, we tend to keep our circle really tight and we don't allow negativity. Um, we're just, we're trying to do all the things that we've always wanted to do that we didn't know was possible because we want to be a good example for other people. Because if you're going to coach somebody, then you need to make sure that you're doing what you're telling them they need to do. So that's what we're trying to be a good example of. But no, we're not perfect at all. And I'm going to tell you, there are no shortcuts in life. Okay, there's the only, the only way to make it is the long way which is do it right, build it slow, build a foundation on rock, um, which is what we've done. And when we do that and other people haven't taken the time to do it, well, they think that there's short shortcuts. And the shortcuts that they want to choose are to try to pull up stuff from our past or do whatever. Listen, if I wouldn't have gone through all that stuff when I was younger, I wouldn't have the company I have today. I wouldn't lead the way I do today. I wouldn't believe the way I believe today. I had to touch the stove to know that it was hot. God forgives you. It's the hardest thing in the world to accept. There's no work that can be done. It's just understanding that He loves you so much, He's already forgiven you. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety on God because He cares for you. And then it continues to go. It says, the, the devil's like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It says, but resist him and stand firm in your faith because other brothers and sisters around the world are going through the same kind of suffering. And in due time, God's all, almighty hand will lift you up, make you firm, strong, and steadfast. If you're going through hell, look man, God made you to get ready to do some big stuff in life. He needs people that are broken to fix broken people. What if my kids find out one time what I did bad? What if, you know, dude, listen to me. That's part of your story. That's. God forgives you for everything you've done. All the things that have happened to you bad in your life are preparing you and getting you ready for what you're gonna go through next.